What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're wrapping up the conservation project for this copy of Avengers No. 1, the first appearance of the Avengers from November 1963 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. If you've been following along, you know that this copy belongs to a friend of the channel, and we've already spent a few weeks working on this grail book, and I'm happy to say we made some massive improvements on this book that make it present a lot better, have created a lot of value for the owner, and, most importantly, have preserved this book for future generations. In Episode 1, we did an assessment of the book and developed a game plan for the conservation process, and in Episode 2, we did a dry clean of the exterior of the book, front and back cover. In episode 3, we disassembled the comic and dry cleaned the reverse or interior of the cover, but concluded that video with the discovery that some of the inks on the reverse were not well adhered to the cover at all. In fact, just a gentle wipe with a dry cotton round removed a significant amount of black ink from the interior. This led me to reevaluate our plan to remove the tide marks, water stains, and tanning from the cover with an aqueous bath in favor of something a bit less invasive. So, in episode 4, I reviewed the history of photo bleaching of paper and the various aqueous solutions one can use to optimize the outcome while using blue LEDs, which techniques I recommend for conservation work and demonstrated the specific method I use. In episode 5, I performed a bit more dry cleaning of some of the smeared black inks on the reverse and completed the archival tear seals on the interior of the cover with Tengujo paper and wheat paste. In episode 6, I trimmed the excess Tengujo paper from the cover, reassessed the comic after the cold press, decided it needed a bit of blue LED treatment to knock out some red ink bleed that we picked up during the cold press, and showed off the phenomenal results of the tear seals. In episode 7, we reviewed the results of the final blue LED treatments, chemically de-rusted the staples, and put a protective patina on them, and reassembled the book for final press. Follow the link in the upper right corner if you want to get caught up with any of those videos before watching this video. In today's video, I'm going to show you the heat press setup I used because I deviated a little bit from my normal pressing procedures. And then we're going to look at the final results and all of the before and after pictures for this completed project. But before we get to our main topic, I want to remind everyone that we are closing in on our goal of 1,000 subscribers. And in appreciation of subscribers new and old, I'm giving away this copy of Star Wars number one in CGC 7.5 with white pages. This is the first appearance of Luke, Leia, Vader, R2, 3PO, and a host of others, as well as the first cover appearance of Obi-Wan and Han Solo. It was published six weeks before A New Hope opened in theaters in 1977. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and follow the link over to that video to comment there for a chance to win. All right, let's get to work. First, make sure you have clean and dry hands. I've got our book all reassembled. And this is a magazine backer board. It's a fresh one. I buy BCW, not that I think it matters much. It is acid free. I'm gonna cut the relief for staples and I'm showing you how I do that. I use a pencil so that if I slip, I can erase it off the book. I don't want to use a pen. And I just make little marks above and below the staples. And I have this little pair of, these are surgical scissors. They happen to be curved, which I think makes this a little bit easier to cut a really precise crescent out of the backer board. But I'm sure you could accomplish this with straight scissors as well. I'm just going to cut those two little crescents out. Those are the relief for the staple. 
and make sure you collect these and put them in the recycle bin. If you leave those behind, they are going to make impressions on your book when you press it. I smooth out these edges because sometimes the scissors can sort of curl the paper and make it a little bit sharp. I don't want to have to press that flat, so I'm going to start off with it nice and flat. So this is going to go into the center fold, nice and tight, up against the fold. And now I'm just going to check the alignment of the cover. Remember that we have a little bit of play when we place our staples. And also, the wet treatments can shrink the cover a little bit. So we really want to make sure that we get our alignment spot on. Sometimes it just naturally flops exactly where you want it, and you can just press it. But this one, I think, needs a little bit of encouragement. And I'm pulling it and pressing it down in the right spot to make sure that it will go where I need it to go without me having to readdress the staples. And it will, but I don't think it's going to stay there. So what I'd like to do is give it a little bit of a press with my tack iron to make sure it's going to stay exactly where I want it for my press in the seal. So I'm going to set my tack iron to about two and a half. This piece of repurposed granite that I cut from a countertop leftover is going to act as just a little raised surface so that you can see my left hand there can grip the book. Ordinarily, I would do this off the edge of my desk, but it's not conducive to good videography. So I use this block. I have a piece of SRP below the comic and one on top. And what I'm going to do is, with my left hand, I have the backer board in like the crotch of my hand between my thumb and my fingers. And then I'm using my thumb and my fingers to pull the book. And then I'll use my thumb to shift up or down to make sure that the cover's aligned exactly where I want it. Then I'll pinch it, and then I'll take the tack iron and just really gently glide over it. By the way, there was a little bit of a time lapse in between there in my video, so the tack iron is up to temperature. And now I'll do the same thing on the back. I'm using my thumb to hold the paper exactly where I want it. I can pull it toward my hand. I can keep it tight on the backer board, and I can also shift it up and down so that the top and bottom edges align as perfectly as possible. Again, your cover can shrink a little bit in the wet treatment, and that's normal. The cover wasn't aligned perfectly, frankly, when we received the book because this book already had had some water damage. Now here you see the deviation that I mentioned. I'm going to use SRP. You've seen me before use copy paper between the cover and the body of the book, the first wrap. I'm going to use SRP. The reason I'm using SRP is because we saw that those inks are not really fast and I don't want them to rub off on copy paper during the press. So I'm going to use SRP, which is not quite as transferable, right? It's kind of non-stick. And so we shouldn't get any ink transfer during that process. Here's my trusty little seal. This is the little brother to giant frogmouth. This is little frogmouth. I have two magazine backer boards plus a sheet of SRP on the bottom. Then my stack that you saw. And that's a sheet of aluminum on the bottom, eighth inch stick. And then I'm going to go SRP sheet plus two magazine backer boards on top. Put this in the press. This is going to go 155 Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. And by the magic of video editing, that 12 minutes and this is 24 hours later. I'll leave it in the press to cool. You can take it out and put it in a cold press if you need the press for something else. In this particular instance, I didn't. As you know, I have several presses, and I didn't need this one to be turned over in an hour or two. But you can if you need to. Just want to, if you do that, put the book under cold press in the interim. 
All right. So here's the book. It only took one press and the paper is beautifully flat. All the wrinkles, both from those that came in the book to us, as well as some of the waviness that was introduced during some of the processes that we used mist during our Japanese paper mending. Those waves are gone. It's really beautifully flat. Look at the inside cover here. It's really white. It's been mended. The rip that was on that facing edge is gone. The ink that was bleeding through on that edge is gone. I'll show you a close up of that later. We didn't do much to these interior pages. We cleaned a few foreign substances off them here and there, uh, but they didn't need much. They have beautiful white to off-white pages. They are supple. They just didn't need any further treatment. There was no need for any invasive intervention on the inner wraps of this book. No further intervention was going to increase the grade that we got for this book or preserve it for future generations any better than what we had already done. You can see at the centerfold how we removed the original staples and de-rested them and replaced them back in the book with an archival method. Beautiful house ad for Strange Tales. Wonderful six and nine panel grids and then here we get a change up with a seven panel grid from Jack Kirby. That's fantastic. Four annual. Another great house ad. Great Kirby layouts. It's a nice little one and done story. And that last panel where the wasp names the Avengers. It's pretty awesome. If you remember, this cover was badly stained. It's not as white as it looks here. I have auto color correction on the video and I think it, it's not it's not as starkly white as what you see there by the way. I'll show you in some color corrected before and afters and you get a better sense for really how the book presents now. It, it isn't quite that stark white or that bright of white I guess I should say. Here's our first before and after. This is the front cover. These are color corrected with a Nikon camera. And you can see how much brighter the book looks. There were also some foreign substances on the cover. And there was a small rip on the leading edge just above Thor's left shoulder that we repaired as well. You see it shows up as a crinkle there on the before and then you don't see anything there on the after. The back cover looks similarly lightened and brightened. Notice here, it doesn't look quite as starkly white as it looked in the video. It looks a bit more naturally tanned. We repaired that rip on the bottom. The water stains are, for the most part, gone. We retained really good bright inks. And again, overall, the book just presents a lot better, especially on the right-hand side of this back cover. It was really dark and water stained and a lot of tide marks on the before. Here's a specific close up of some of the foreign substances that were on this book. You see this material that we scraped off and it did leave a little bit of a stain. You can see in the ink there on the right, but you can also see how we pressed the book, how it's whiter and how we got rid of the foreign body. It just presents so much better and it's going to grade a lot better. Here in the back cover you see where we dramatically decreased these tide marks. We overall lightened the book and got rid of some of the tanning and that tear was mended. Here you can see the tear pretty obviously on the interior it's almost invisible and that other tear is nearly invisible on the interior as well. We'll show you that in a moment. This is how we cleaned up the staples. The staple on the right looks like it's thinner, but it's actually just with the trick of my photography, the shadow fell a bit more deeper because of the light source on the left. The staple itself is the same size. And you see we got rid of all that red rust scale that was on the surface, but it's not super bright and shiny. 
it has a correct patina for a 60 year old staple so we use the technique of the Canadian Conservation Institute and really got a great result. Maybe the most dramatic change is on the interior of this book. Again, these are color corrected images and you can see on the left, the before, just the extent of the tanning and the tide marks from the stains, the water penetration that had already been on this book. All of that's been dramatically improved and really whitened, but not over whitened. It really has a nice color that, again, evokes some age like a 60-year-old book. One of the other things that we did that I'm really proud of is we got rid of this ink bleed that was on the leading edge of the front cover. So this image shows two things. That ink bleed is all but gone. I think, you know, we know that it was there so you can see a little dark area, but a casual observer, someone that didn't know the ink bleed was there, they're never going to notice that. It is effectively gone. And then above it, we had that little tear with a crease, and you can see that that tear has been effectively repaired with the Tengujo paper to the extent that it is essentially invisible. And the reason why it was so critical to remove that ink bleed is because that was from some black ink that had been applied to the front of the cover in Thor's cape. And if we left that behind, we ran the risk of getting a purple label from CGC for a restored book. Even though I don't think the ink was intentional color touch, I didn't want to give CGC any excuse to slap a restored label on this book. Color touch is notoriously difficult to remove without damaging the book. So the fact that we were able to remove this with no damage at all is something I'm really happy with. Well, that about wraps this project up. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for the conclusion of this conservation project for this copy of Avengers Number 1. What do you think of the final results? Most of the materials I use today are available from Amazon and the affiliate links in the video description if you need any of them for your own conservation efforts. I'll be starting a new conservation project soon, so stay tuned. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, Take care of one another.